All right, here's a quick tip on how to use basic radio triggers for manual off-camera flash setups. Now, this is something pretty easy once you know how, but it's kind of a mystery for people who are just starting out or have never done it before. Now, the point of doing this is to get your remote flash units to sync to your camera when you fire the shutter. And there are really lots of ways to do this, and this is just one. Usually how this works is a radio transmitter is mounted to the camera's hot shoe. It's synced up with a radio receiver uh, that's connected to the flash. And so then when you press the shutter button, uh, it sends a signal through the hot shoe to the transmitter, out to the compatible uh, radio receiver. That receiver tells the flash when to fire. And this all happens very quickly and keeps everything in sync. So you just mount the transmitter onto your camera like this. In this case, this Young Nuo transmitter is compatible with the built-in radio receiver on this Young Nuo flash. So we wouldn't need a receiver mounted to this flash. But if your flash doesn't have a built-in compatible radio receiver, we're gonna need to mount one and then we'd be good to go. Okay, let me just show you how these uh, receiver transmitter units work. All right, so here we're using the Young Nuo RF603C. Uh, I guess these are Mark II because it says two there after the uh, model number. Now these act as radio triggers or receivers. Batteries go in here, those are a couple of double A's. We're gonna set one to transmitter. Set the other to receiver. Use the test firing button. You see that little light went off. That means that the receiver did receive the signal. And it actually sent a signal through its hot shoe and that would have been transmitted to the flash and it would make the flash go off. So the transmitter unit is gonna be mounted to the camera. It was in the camera's hot shoe. So when you press that shutter button, it's gonna send a signal to the transmitter through the camera's hot shoe. That signal is going to go out to the receiving unit or to a flash that has a receiver built in like this one does. Now if you have an old flash that doesn't have a compatible receiver built in or uh, just a flash that isn't a young new old flash, uh, you can just slip that on there. Then just mount this whole thing to your light stand and it's going to fire when you hit the shutter button. Now keep in mind these are manual radio triggers, they're not ETTL compatible. You'd have to get a set of ETTL compatible radio triggers that match your camera and flash. Uh, in order for that to work. But uh, what I do a lot of times when I'm uh, just shooting portraiture, I just have all my flashes set to manual. That way everything just stays consistent as far as the lighting goes. So if you're gonna use a flash that is ETTL compatible, just make sure that you uh, adjust the mode of that flash to manual instead of ETTL. All right, now we've got our transceiver mounted to the camera and our receiver mounted to the flash, and it works. And of course, we, you know, we can do this with more than one flash. We can have several flashes uh, set up and you can adjust each flash manually to the power setting that it needs to be. So in other words, your main light might be one power setting. Uh, your rim light, your hair light might be another. So you're in full control of the power settings. You just set each one manually. Your trigger is going to send a signal to all the receiving units and they'll fire when you press that shutter button. And like I said, there's lots of other ways to do this. You can do this using PC cords, sync cords. You can do it wirelessly with radio triggers. You can use optical triggering. Lots of ways to do this. I've used these Young Nuo radio triggers for a couple of years now. They haven't let me down. They work, they're cheap. Uh, I use them all the time. Uh, so you might check these out if you're looking for uh, budget radio triggers. I used to use Pocket Wizards exclusively, but they're so much more expensive than these. For just a basic dumb radio trigger, these do the job much cheaper, easier to replace if something goes wrong. Uh, I think that's the way to go. Anyway, that's it for today. I hope you found these tips useful. If you want to see more videos, make sure to click subscribe, press the little bell icon so that you get notified when I have new videos coming out. Um, leave a comment for me. Click the like button. Have fun today. I'll see you next time.